Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. And if you're new here, well welcome to the channel and I really appreciate you tuning in and I hope you enjoy the channel. Now today we're not reviewing a particular camera or microphone, audio gear, whatever. I'm more talking about is there a future in compact cameras? Or do I think there's a future in compact cameras? And I actually don't think there is. And I know I'm not alone. As many people who have said the same thing, they said it a few years ago, and I've been saying it for the last year or so. Um, and one of the big reasons there isn't a future in compact cameras is these things, mobile phones. Everyone's got a mobile phone. This happens to be the iPhone 13 Pro, and it has three camera modules on the back of this phone. And I have to say, of which most of you know anyway, the video, the video and uh, photo quality that comes off the iPhone 13 Pro is phenomenal. It would be the same with a Google Pixel 4 and 6, uh, the Samsung 20, is it 10 and 20, whatever. All the modern mobile phones have got great camera modules and they're producing great video and great photos. So why would you go out and buy something like the Sony ZV-1? Now this came out in uh, August 2020. It is a great camera. I'm not going to knock that. I've got two of them. I use them on a you know, regular basis for producing my video content. In fact, my other ZV-1 is filming these close-up shots anyway. So um, I use it a great deal. Great for vlogging, 4K videos. If you are into vlogging, um, ideal camera for that sort of thing. Um, but on the other hand, the mobile phone is great for that as well. The front facing cameras on the modern mobile phones are great so you can do your vlogging on your mobile phone and produce 4K content and you know store it within the phone or some of the phones have external SD cards you can put into it. Um, so you know, do you really need to carry around two cameras? And I've discussed this before. I mean, the other camera I have, which is a really old camera, this came out in uh, uh, 2016 and this is the Fuji X70. Now this has got a much bigger sensor. This has got an APS-C sensor. Uh, it's got the articulating screen. Uh, well it's not articulating, it, it shifts upwards and downwards. Um, proper aperture ring on the you know body of the camera so you know you can set your aperture there, control ring, shutter speed dial on the top etc etc. Um, but again this is this particular camera has a fixed 18 mil lens, which is effectively uh, 28 mil in full frame terms. So, you know, it's only got that one lens. So you're completely restricted to what that can do. With your mobile phone, you take your mobile phone out, that's got three camera modules in the back here. So you've got your, um, you got your wide one, or I call it the standard one, they call it wide. Then you've got ultra wide, just by tapping that, and then you've got your telephoto. Um, and you can, there we go, hang on. And you've got your uh, telephoto module. And that's all separate optical modules on the back here. And you've got digital zoom as well. But we're just talking about the optical ones. The quality from that, those three lenses is great. The, the standard one gives you the best quality, but it's absolutely fabulous. You know, you can get some great, great images. One area where mobile phone technology is let down and that's because of the physics uh, as opposed to what they can or cannot do is bokeh. You can't create that lovely, you know, out of focus backgrounds, but separation between yourself or whoever you're photographing or videoing uh, to the background. Very, very difficult to do that, you know, with a mobile phone. They do have what we call cinematic mode now. Uh, and there is portrait mode in the camera, but that's fake bokeh. It is really good, but it isn't great. It's not, you know, it's not the best. Also, what you can't do in that mode, you can't shoot raw. You see, now with these modern phones, uh, Samsung have it as well. You see in the top right hand corner, there's a thing called raw. It's got an arrow going through it at the moment. So when I take a photograph, it isn't going to take a raw photo. But if I uncheck that, when every photograph I take, it will take a JPEG image and a RAW image. I've got it set up internally to do that, to do both. Now with RAW, 
you've got a lot of flexibility with your edit. So you, it's great for editing. Um, you can adjust your highlights, your shadows, your contrast, etc., etc. You can do a lot more with it. And that's what I do. I always shoot raw when I'm using a mobile phone. You can do a lot more with it. And I'm going to show you some images in just a moment as to why it is so much better, you know, to shoot raw than it is to shoot JPEG. Um, and I think, you know, uh, that is great. Obviously, you can do that with your uh, compact cameras, such as your Fuji XMC or the uh, Sony ZV-1. I mean, the ZV-1 has a one-inch sensor, so it's still bigger than what a mobile phone has, but it's smaller than what the X70 has. So, you know, in theory, both these cameras should be producing far superior images to the iPhone. But the sad thing is, or the good thing is, it depends on how you look at it, they're not. The iPhone can produce, the same with the Samsung Android phones, can produce great, great images. Completely, you know, takes away the need for using a compact camera. Um, and of course, it's all in It's all in the unit. Also, you can plug, if you're doing video, you can plug external mics into something like the iPhone and use an app like Filmic Pro or whatever. Um, you can with a ZV-1, that's got a mic jack uh, in the side, that's got a mic jack on the top there and under that flap. Um, but the Fuji X70 hasn't, you know, actually it might have, to be fair, maybe it has. Uh, yeah, it has actually, or is that a remote jack? No, that's a remote. So, um, you know, you can't plug external mics into most of these compact cameras. The uh, little Panasonic cameras you can't. Um, so. You know, there's still so many advantages for having a, you know, using a mobile phone as there is to using a compact camera. So I, I really can't see that manufacturers such as Sony will be making any more of the RX100 range. They're up to the RX107, but maybe they'll go up to the 8, maybe 9 even, I don't know. But I can't see they would sell the quantities required to make it, you know, worth their while. It's like with Ricoh. They've got the GR3 and the GR3X, which is effectively the same camera, but the, the 3X has a 42 megapixel, uh, sorry, a 42 megapixel, a, a, a 42 mil lens as opposed to an 18 mil wide angle lens. That's pretty much all they've done with the X, is put a different lens in the camera. Um, but uh, I can't see that they're going to make any more because mobile phone technology is getting so, so much better. Um, and I say the only downside is you can't get that lovely out of focus um, area. But you can't with a Ricoh GR3, the normal GR3, because it's got a wide angle lens. And you certainly can't with the uh, Fuji X70 because it's got a wide angle lens. If we look at some of these images that come out of the, the iPhone, I mean, they are so nice. The, you know, they're sharp, they're crisp. Uh, you've got lovely detail. And the great thing is, because they are um, raw images, you've got a lot of flexibility with the editing, as I said before. So you can take the highlights down. You can take, bring the shadows up. Um, you know, you can do a lot more with a raw image than you can with a JPEG image. And I, you know, I can't stress enough how important it is if you're really keen on taking great photographs, is to um, shoot raw, you know, and, you know, mobile phones will do that now. You know, again, if you look at this one here, the sharpness and clarity. Now, the sharpness is, a, for me, is a bit of a contentious issue because I think they come out of, cam out of camera, I say camera, it's out of the phone, but they come out a little bit too sharp. So I always turn the sharpness down a bit to give it a little bit more organic look as opposed to... Um, you know, again, you know, look at that, that's, uh, you know, none of these images are, you know, uh, outstanding images, but it's got lovely texture to that, it's come out of a mobile phone, you know, you've still got the sharpness, look at the lovely sharpness and the lovely clarity there, uh, but, you know, the texture's really nice, and you look here, again, the texture is lovely, there's nothing wrong with mobile phone images, um, and I'm blown away by how good they are these days, you know, Again, you look at this, uh, we can again bring up the highlights, we can uh, take down the shadows if we want to. Um, you know, there's a lot you can do with that. But the sharpness is great. You can read that text beautifully. It's really, really good. 
I am so, you know, blown away now with mobile phone photography that I really can't see the need for these compact cameras. I enjoy them because I, I like, you know, the feel of it. It just feels nice um, as opposed to the feel of taking photographs with a phone. You know, it doesn't feel quite the same if you ask me, but um, I am certainly getting my head around it and getting used to it. And I'm certainly enjoying the images. But when you look at the images that come off, let's say, for example, the Fuji X70. And, you know, it, this is a... Uh, APS-C sensor, so it's a bigger sensor than the uh, ZV-1. It's certainly a lot bigger than what you'll find in the um, uh, uh, in the iPhone or any of the mobile phones. But you know, you got lovely crispness, lovely clarity. It's taken a while for my computer to render the images, actually, um, and you know, it's great. It is really good. You know, um, yeah. Apart from the yucky buildings, but you know, hey ho. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know a great little camera, and you're going to get really nice images out of it. But you know, is there any need? So again, we can go into the edit. We can edit that, um, and that looks really grotty, doesn't it? And take the highlights down, and that bring the shadows up. Does the same you can with because uh, it's uh, you know a shot raw. Um, then bring that shadows right up. We can take the highlights right down. Um, but what I would do is something, an image like that, I would actually replace the sky. Um, actually, this is a program, it's great. I actually recommend this program a lot. This is a program called Luminar 4. There's also Luminar AI, and there's a new one coming out uh, in the new year. And there is, if, uh, I will put in the description uh, below a link to where you can download a trial version of Luminar 4 or Luminar AI. And if you do decide you want to buy it, use the code AVP to get $10 off your purchase price. And it's a really, really good value program for buying. And there's no subscription. So once you've bought it, you own it. It's a really, really good bit of software. I, I use it all the time. One of the lovely things with it, you can actually replace the sky. Um, so, you know, if we go into, into here, and then we go, sorry, we go into this one, then we go into sky replacement, uh, we can choose the sky, uh, we'll probably choo choose dramatic because it's such a yucky day. Um, I don't like the look of that particular sky, so let's choose another one. Like so, you know, and then even then you can adjust the brightness contrast of, of the um, sky. You can use automatic, uh, you can use AI sky enhancer. Make it even more dramatic. Loads and loads of things you can do with um, this particular uh, bit of software. And, uh, you know, it's awesome. So, yeah. But as I say, download the trial version. At least download the trial version. Have a play with it. See what you think of it. I think it's great, and I think you'll really enjoy it. And don't forget to use the code AVP to get $10 off if you do decide to buy it. Um, but, yeah, there we go. What do I think of mobile phones? I think they're great. I can't believe, you know, two years ago, even a year ago, I would never have said this. I've never said I'm going to just go out with my mobile phone if I'm going out with my brother or going out uh, with my fiance, whatever, and just use my mobile phone. I wouldn't have done that. I definitely would have taken something like my uh, uh, Fuji X70 or uh, possibly the ZV-1. It's a bit fiddlier taking photographs with a ZV-1 because it is sold predominantly as a vlogging camera and not a, you know, photo camera, but it does take nice photos. I will put a link to a comparison I've done somewhere up here. I think it's up here. Is it up there? Up there. Uh, to the iPhone 13 Pro and the ZV-1. I think you'll be surprised, really, how good the iPhone is. How really, really good the iPhone is. So, um, there we go. Do I think there's going to be more compact cameras made? No, I don't. I don't think Sony are going to release any more RX100 range. And um, I don't think Rico will produce another one over and above a Rico GR3. I think, you know, we're all going to start fading them out. But one thing that really does irritate me, and I think this is another reason why... We, uh, compact cameras, uh, you know, aren't selling in their volume, is that they don't talk to phones easily. Now, 
We all want to take photographs of our cats and our family and upload them to Facebook and upload them to Instagram. So I can go out with me phone, I can go out with my iPhone here, I can take a photograph right right this minute, you know, take a photo, let's just take that, you know, of that computer, I can take that, and I can now go into, you know, the photo app, uh, select that photo, and share it. Just one click, isn't it? We all know how, I don't really need to show how this is done. Just one click, and I can share that to Instagram, email, Facebook, you know, whatever I want to share it with. And that is phenomenal. That is awesome. And you get a great quality image already uploaded to your social media for all your friends, business clients, whatever to see. But with these phones, let's have a look at this camera here, the ZV-1. You know, yeah, it can theoretically transmit images and video. Well, video would take hours, but it can transmit images to your mobile phone. But what a palaver. What a nightmare it is to try and get the flipping thing to work all the time. Uh, Nikon have got the best app, I think. That works reasonably well, actually. The um, Snapbridge app works pretty well. But all the other ones, the Panasonic one is awful. They're all awful. The Fuji one is awful. Um, I think they're just all awful. You know, if they really do want to sell compact cameras, which I don't think they do, or even, you know, the likes, you know, likes of my A6600, I've got fitted to my A6600, me um, Sony uh, 70 to 350. Now, you know, let's say, for example, I managed to take a fantastic image of a bird in flight or whatever, and um, if I really want to get that up onto uh, Facebook now, onto Flickr or whatever, you know, right this minute. Um, and, you know, I can't because there's no easy way of transmitting the image from this camera to, uh, you know, my iPhone. It's just awful. Why have they not got that sorted out? It can't be that difficult. I genuinely can't see how it can be, in this day and age, with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and all the rest of it, how it can be that difficult to get that image from the camera to the phone. I just find all these mobile apps are a right palaver. And I think if they can get that bit worked out, then they may well, you know, sell more cameras. And I, I think that's, you know, a big issue, certainly with a compact camera market. So there we go. That's my thoughts on uh, the compact camera market. And do I think there's going to be any more? And the answer is no, I don't. I think as mobile phone technology gets better and better, um, then there's going to be less need uh, for the, you know, uh, compact cameras. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And hit the like button if you like the content on my videos. I really enjoy making these videos. And I do put quite a bit of effort into making these videos. So um, I appreciate people that like them. That does help me grow the channel. And leave any comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on compact cameras or any cameras really, but particularly compact cameras versus the mobile phone. Um, it would be very interesting to see what you think. So thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography. Cheers for now. Bye.